JBN, we keep you informed. I am Michelle Jones and in the news, man shot fatal in Homestead, St. Catherine. A man was fatally shot by a gunman at his home on Pittsburgh Avenue in Homestead, St. Catherine, shortly after 5 a.m. The man identified as 34-year-old Alonzo Bennett, otherwise called the Boxy, was at home when gunmen forced their way into his house and shot him several times in his upper body. He was pronounced dead at hospital. This incident followed the killing of Damien Merlin at an illegal party in the community on Thursday night, a shooting the police said was gang-related. The motive for this morning's murder is still not clear, according to police. Businessman and a senior citizen killed in downtown Kingston gun attack. A businessman is among two men who were shot and killed by a gunman in downtown Kingston on Saturday. The deceased, our 61-year-old Neville Tate of West Bay, Garvey Mead in Portmore, St. Catherine, and 43-year-old Michael James, a businessman of Luke in Kingston. Police reports are that about 8 a.m. on Saturday, the two men were at a juice outlet when they were pounced upon by armed men who opened gunfire, hitting them. The attackers then fled the scene. Tate reportedly died at the scene, while James, who was assisted to the hospital, succumbed to his injuries while undergoing treatment. The police are investigating. Another bus crash in Western Jamaica leaves one dead. A vehicle collision involving two buses in St. James on Sunday has left a woman dead and one of the drivers seriously injured. Reports received are that a Toyota Costa bus was traveling towards Montego Bay with one passenger aboard when the driver lost control of the vehicle about 8 a.m. along the flank of Main Road. The bus careened across the median, hitting another Costa bus which was traveling in the opposite direction. The impact of the collision reportedly caused the death of the female passenger on the bus and the serious injury of the driver. The driver was the only person on board the other bus. This is the second deadly bus crash in two days in western Jamaica. On Saturday, two people died in a crash in Braco Trelawney when a hotel staff bus ran into a parked truck. Gun stolen in Santa Cruz, St. Elizabeth. The police have launched a manhunt for two men who yesterday stole the loaded license firearm of a businessman in Santa Cruz, St. Elizabeth. It supported that about 2 p.m. The businessman parked his Toyota Tacoma truck on the compound of a plaza in Santa Cruz to conduct business in a nearby store. Two men traveling in a gray Nissan Selfie later drove into the plaza. It supported that they threw a brick into the front passenger window of the businessman truck, entered and stole a bag containing his license firearm along with 16 rounds of ammunition. The robbers made good their escape. Soldier charged after allegedly being found with illegal gun. A Jamaica Defense Force duty of soldier was charged with illegal possession of a firearm and illegal possession of ammunition following an operation at his home in Kingston. The accused was allegedly held with an illegal 9mm pistol and 14 9mm rounds. In a statement, the JDS said after an internal investigation, it collaborated with the Jamaica Constabulary Force in an operation on Christopher Road in Kingston on Friday. The operation, which was launched at approximately 8.30 a.m., led to the arrest of the JDF soldier. He was later charged and is in custody at the Denham Town Police Station in Kingston. The JDF says he continues to work with the JCF to eradicate illegal firearms and ammunition from the nation's streets. JLP loses key local organizer in Trelawney bus crash. The ruling Jamaica Labour Party JLP has lost a key organizer in St. Anne in the run-up to local government elections with the death of 32-year-old Mikhail Thompson in Saturday's bus crash in Trelawney. Thompson was the party's deputy chairman of the Beachertown division in St. Anne and a key supporter of the expected JLP candidate for the local government election, Nathalie Wilmot. He was also a member of the JLP affiliate group, Generation 2000. I actually was in bed when I got a phone call from one of my supporters in the Rocky Hill community. That was about after 6 o'clock, Wilmot said, from the Montego Bay Convention Center in St. James, where delegates of the JLP were meeting. Wilmot said she decided not to speculate and called the hotel where Thompson was employed to inquire. The person said to me, are you sitting or are you standing? I said to her, I'm already seated. And from there it was just morning, you know, she said. Wilmot said Thompson worked with her mother, who was JLP candidate for the Beachertown Division, in the last local government election. And when her mother stepped down, she took up the position with Thompson staying on to help her. He was very dedicated. Once you call him, 
He would make every effort to assist me on the road. He was a dedicated, hard-working individual, she said. Thompson and another Senton resident, 28-year-old Reese Anderson of Lilyfield, Bambo, died after the bus were traveling in from Ocheres to work at the Excellence Oyster Bay Hotel in Cooper's Ben Trelawney, crashed into a truck parked along the Bracco Main Road. More than eight people were injured in the accident. Road deaths stand at 401, says RSU. The Road Safety Unit RSU is reporting that as of Friday, November 11, some 401 people have been killed in 348 fatal crashes since the start of the year. The number includes the 14 who were killed during the week ending November 11. Four women were among those victims. Also killed during the last week were three motorcyclists, four pedestrians, two passengers of public passenger vehicles, and two private motor car passengers. A breakdown of the figures reveal that the top three categories with the highest number of fatalities since the start of the year are motorcyclists with 119, pedestrians who account for 83, and private motor car drivers at 74. The RSU said the main cause of fatalities was proceeding at excessive speed with no regard to road conditions. Despite breaking the 400 barrier, the RSU said fatal crashes have decreased by 4%, while fatalities are down by 1% when compared with the similar period in 2021. Pedestrians currently account for 21% of the road users killed as at November 11. Motorcyclists account for 30%, private motor vehicle drivers account for 18%, and private motor vehicle passengers 14%. The group classified as being the most vulnerable of the road users, pedestrians, pedal cyclists, motorcyclists and pillion riders, account for 57% of the road users killed as at November 11. Males account for 84%, while females account for 16% of all road deaths so far this year. It's survival, say vendors peddling illegal substance or the people's children. As the St. Catherine South Police continue their crackdown on drugs and contraband in schools, School vendors, many of them parents, have continued to engage law enforcers in a cat and mouse game as they peddle drug infused streets to students, claiming it is for survival. According to Sergeant Princess Bailey Ranger of the St. Catherine South Community Safety and Security Branch of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, despite several arrests, the vendors, once released, are back to serving ganja infused cookies and alcohol soaked gummies to the students. It is a big problem. We do our best every day to ensure that we are out on the road, to ensure we do our researches and arrests, but they still come back. It's a cat and mouse game. They'll watch out for us to see if we're coming to prosecute. And of course, they give this victim story that they're trying to make a living for themselves and all of that. They'll post to us that it's just a survival where they do it, Bailey Ranger said. She said that ironically, the vendors, though operating on the wrong side of the dangerous dogs law, still ensure they have their food handlers permits and meet other requirements for vending. They tend to level up on that. They tend to ensure that they're in the right with that. So the only other alternative is to take them in, she said. Bailey Ranger, asked to see the worst she has seen where a student ingested the cookies, responded. The student was out of it for most of the day, in school but just couldn't function, just there. These are the things we have to be dealing with on a daily basis, she said. In the meantime, she said that the police are now engaging students through a youth with behavioral issues in school program to de-escalate the situation. We tend to reach out to these kinds of students, and in some of the cases, we try to get counselors and other professionals to help them, as well as their parents, she said, adding that the police are willing to work with the students and their parents in order to help them. The National Council on Drug Abuse in a May 22 rapid assessment study, which involved focus groups with 160 students, and interviews with 20 guidance counselors in 13 parishes sought to find out the issues facing young people and the drugs they thought were the most popular. Students said these were molly, vaping and edibles. On Friday, nurse Jacqueline Parchment of the St. Catherine Health Department, in detailing the impact of early drug use, said half of the mentally ill residents in the parish of St. Catherine were drug addicts, a number of whom are young school leavers who have become a menace to their families frequently landing in trouble with the law to fund their drug habit. She said of the almost 4,000 people in the parish diagnosed with a mental illness, half of that amount are drug users, most of whom are addicted to alcohol. Parchment was part of a panel at the Osimarty Technical High School in St. Catherine on Friday, where the National Council on Drug Abuse launched its school tour in recognition of Drug Awareness Month, said habits were being formed from the classrooms. 
She said that while the department has been seeing young school-age children with mental conditions brought on by drug abuse in the child guidance clinics, the majority have been young graduates. What we see most is the people who have left school. So when they leave school at 17, 18, 19 years old, we find that we see most of them come into our adult clinics and they are the ones who have found themselves in problems with the law because to feed their habits sometimes, they are deviants and so they engage in a lot of deviant behavior, Parchment said. We find they are not only in problems with the law, but they also have a lot of family dysfunction because sometimes they have now disturbed the equilibrium of the family and so there are a lot of issues because of drug abuse, she said. In sports news, Mannings and Manchester into the Cup semis. Manning School made it back to back semi final qualification in the Issa da Costa Cup football competition, while Manchester High returned after seven year absence after consecutive wins in their quarter final games on Saturday. Russia and Graham scored a hat trick as Mannings plundered from technical 6 1 at Landalo Sports Complex, and Manchester High beat William Nib 3 1 at the St. Elizabeth Technical Sports Complex in Santa Cruz. Both winners raced to six points after just two games and cannot be overhauled as they also booked their spots in the first round of the Issa All Island KO competition. From Technical and William Lee Memorial were losing their third consecutive games after they had been unbeaten all season up to the final round of games in the round of 16. Both teams will participate in the Ben Francis KO of the Tuesday's final round of games in the quarterfinals. In the other games on the rain affected day, Clarendon College also made two wins from two starts in the quarterfinals, beating Edwin Allen 2-0 at Brooks Park, and Dintel Technical kept their semi-final hopes alive with a 3-1 win over Central High at Foga Road. Manning School were ruthless in the second half on Saturday, scoring five times after from Technical had tied up their scores at 1-1 just before halftime. Manchester High ran out easy winners in the game that saw the halftime break extended because of heavy rains and a flooded field at Stats. Shaquille Campbell's 17th minute free kick gave Manchester High the lead at half time. Adrian Campbell doubled the advantage in the 53rd minute before second half substitute Jaheim Bryan put the game out of reach of William Nib when he scored the third in the 71st minute. Mark Lewis, who came off the bench, got William Nib's consolation from the penalty spot in time added. At Brooks Park, Kahim Dixon and Mark Reese Reed scored to put Clarendon College on the brink of their seventh consecutive semi final and a point against Dintel Technical on Tuesday would be sufficient. Dintel Technical restored their hopes after being beaten by Edwin Allen on Wednesday, rebounding with a comfortable win over Central High. Dintel Technical took the lead in the ninth minute from an own goal, but Shane Gordon equalized for Central High in the 23rd minute. Giovanni Affleck restored Dintel Technical's lead a minute later with his 20th goal of the season, while Thiamba Chin added a third in the 51st minute. Saturday's results. William Nib 1, Manchester 3, Mannings 6 from 1, Central 1, Dintel 3, and Clarendon College 2, Edwin Allen Neal. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.